Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Citizens of the Stars. I am here at the show floor booth at Gamescom 2017. Jared, if you're gonna dance, I'm gonna put you to work. Come tell me, come tell everybody about the schedule. Come on, come on. Hi Star Citizen! When are we going live this week? I'm Jared. Jared. When are we going live this week? Super pumped! <gasps> this is my life. Wednesday, what time? Wednesday, 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 we're streaming from right here in the booth. We're still building it, we're still putting it together. It's looking great. We're streaming uh, starting at 10 a.m. UTC, that's universal time, because everybody lives in a different time zone. So just Google time zone converter, find out where that time zone is for you. It's 12 p.m. local, it's 10 a.m. UTC. Woo! Wait, come back, Thursday. Thursday, it's the same schedule. We're starting the same day, we brother. Friday. I turned this into like a, a pro wrestling promo, didn't I? Yeah, it, I'm, I'm afraid you're about to, to, to yes, okay, let's, exactly. let's, let's move on. Friday. Friday the schedule changes because we've got our fifth annual Gamescom presentation in the evening. So we are starting here at 10 a.m. local time, that's 8 a.m. UTC, that's way in the middle of the night Pacific. Sorry guys, you get everything else, you don't get this. No, that's good. And when do we wrap it up on Saturday? And then Saturday, we're right back here, 12, 12 p.m. local time, 10 a.m. UTC. But of course, don't forget the Gamescom presentation itself. Doors open at, well, you're not really, you're not going in person, you're at home. So who cares when the doors open? The show will start at 9 p.m. local, that's 7 p.m. UTC. And it's gonna be us uh, filling time until the show's ready to go. Jared has conquered jet lag very effectively. So now, before we go, you remember that running gag? Come, get back here. You remember that running gag from uh, last week's show? That's right, because because ben, because ben is still out, I have to do Citizen Spotlight. Yes, so, so you questions. need to get there before I finish this sentence. Okay. Ready? Ready? Let's throw it over to Jared Huckabee for this week's Citizen Spotlight. Welcome everybody to Citizen Spotlight, our weekly look at the amazing content creations made by you, the Star Citizen community. And joining us on the show this week is someone who's no stranger to folks who have been following the project since the very beginning, one of the original Star Citizen fan composers, Matt Fossa. Matt, how you doing, man? Doing great. Great to be on the show. Now, Matt, you've been composing Star Citizen music, like I said, almost since the very beginning of the project. Why don't you tell the folks at home who aren't familiar with you exactly who you are and what you do? Oh, thanks. Well, uh, I'm a professional symphony orchestra musician and in, I play oboe professionally. And I also like to compose music, kind of being steeped in it so much, I want to write my own. When Star Citizen was first uh, introduced, I sort of went crazy one day and uh, wanted to write some music for it um, just as a fan and you know didn't know if it was going to be taken seriously or whatever and then I found out that there was this fan show called Wingman's Hangar that was going to be delivering the news. They took um, contributions from another citizen for a logo and I thought how about if I do some theme music? So over the course of three days I just started writing out this full-blown orchestral piece and uh, they liked it so much when I sent it in that they used it for their uh, credits. Now, of course, over the years, you've collaborated with a whole host of Star Citizens. Why don't you tell folks about those collaborations? Yeah, um, I composed the soundtrack, uh, the theme music for Batgirl, for Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, and she used it for Ben's Day and all that. Um, the Grievance Star Citizen Report, I've done their opening credits music. I also did the music for Nighthawk Zale. Uh, his stuff too. I, I did some theme music for him. Um, and also this group of like 11 or 12 of us, kind of the old guard, we called ourselves the Motley Collaborators. I ended up being sort of the soundtrack composer for some of their projects. And we did this big one called Saving Citizens um, to help uh, with a fundraiser. Now, of course, the Star Citizen community isn't the only place where people can hear your music. I understand that your music is actually in the game at Port Olisar. Tell us about that. That's right, yeah. Um, Pedro Camacho and I have become friends uh, of a passion and um, just innocently I said, hey, look, if you have any oboe parts that you'd love me to look at as an oboist, I'd be glad to check it out just to contribute, no fee or anything like that. And he said, are you kidding? I'd love to have you actually play a solo on the soundtrack. And then it was like, yeah, whatever. And the, the idea went away for a while. And then all of a sudden I get a message from him on Google Hangouts saying, hey, Matt, I've got a job for you. 
And I said, are you kidding? He's like, no. I was like, and here it is. He sends me the music and he tells me how to position my microphone. I record myself playing the Sobo solo 16 times. He took about, I think, take eight. And that's what you hear in Port Olisar when you spawn in and there isn't any crazy activity around. Well, Matt, thanks for taking the time to finally appear on our show. With that, let's find out what's happening this week in Star Citizen. Hey everybody, me again here with another episode of Quantum Questions, where we take a CIG developer, put them on the hot seat, and make them answer as many questions from you, the Star Citizen subscriber, as they can in under two minutes. Joining us on the show this week is lead technical designer at a Foundry 42 UK, Mr. John Crew. John, how you doing, man? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for being on the show. We've been chasing you for a while. It, it's almost done. Yeah, I've been trying to avoid you, but <laughs> I'll be last. All right, well, it's almost done. We got two minutes left, so let's put two minutes on the clock and begin. What is your name and what do you do? Uh, my name is John Crew. I'm the lead technical designer here at Foundry 42. And what are you working on right now? Uh, right now, we are looking at all the balance work for all the ships with item 2.0 for 3.0. Okay, what is the toughest part about balancing so many ships? Fair. The toughest part is that there are so many ships. There's, there's more than 50 in the game and they all have to feel different to each other and be enjoyable, uh, especially when everyone's got their favorite ship and they want their ship to be the best out of all of them. All right. What is the best part about balancing so many ships? Uh, it's because there are so many, you, you can do lots of nice little interesting things and uh, seeing the, the uh, owner's feedback on what you've done to their ship and how much they like it or dislike it, and then do something about it. All right. Uh, what can you tell us about being able to lock our ships? Uh, so that's something you'll be able to do in 3.0. You can do that at the moment uh, from the dashboard in your ship. Uh, there's a interaction on the, the dashboard which locks all the external doors. Uh, so when you press that, you're the only person that can X those doors until you press the button again to allow everyone to do it. How is flying an Idris different than flying a Hornet? Uh, it's obviously much slower. Uh, you, you've still got manual control, uh, like the smaller ships, but obviously it's it's much more reduced in its rotational velocities. But there's also going to be uh, the helmsman's display, so it's more flying via yeah, waypoints. Okay. Uh, what work is being done on making turrets better? Uh, so I'm actually in a meeting straight after this, uh, where we're drilling down into the progress we've made on turrets, uh, they completely changed with their setup in item 2.0, so a lot of the features like gyro stabilization uh, and tracking is, is getting a whole new look at. And how much do you dread when Jared asks you to be on a video? Uh, lots. I've been avoiding this for months. <laughs> right. Well, that's it. Time's up. You did great, John. See, easy cool. peasy. Easy peasy. That's right. So thank you, John, for being on the show, and uh, let's find out how you did. And so John Crew goes on the board with a total of eight questions answered correctly. It's not quite enough to dethrone Mike Jones, but you know, better luck next time, John. For those of you watching, remember you can submit your questions for consideration each and every week by submitting them in the subscriber's den up on Spectrum. So for Quantum Questions, I'm Jared Huckabee. Let's throw it over to whatever the next segment is and uh, find out. Because I don't know if it's Alexis. Um... <laughs> I just saw it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of Subconscious, the mini show that tells you what you need to know, assuming you are a subscriber, that is. Our first news item is really on point, which is to say that the latest edition of Jump Point is on the subscriber area of the site. This month, David Ladyman took Battle to the Ground with a look at the Ursa rover, which will be available to drive in Alpha 3.0. We also look into the lore behind Tumbrel and Crusader's Moons and start a new serial called A Gift for Baba. And speaking of gifts, the subscribership of the month is the Gion Cartual. You have two more weeks to try out your scout. Of course, the real gift here was that effortless segue, which I assume is what you're really here to see. And another thing that you can see is a new vault this week. 
It'll go up on Friday covering the next concept ship. What ship is that? Stay tuned to the Gamescom presentation to find out. That's it for this week. Tune in on Friday for our Gamescom presentation. And be sure to stop by and say hi in the subscribers chat on Spectrum. I'll see you all in the den. Hey everyone, here's my picks for this week's top five and MVP. Number five, the race created by Bao Ren is a render of two Banu defenders racing planet size using Daz 3D. Great job. Number four, the feeling of being watched by Hasgahal is a high res screenshot of him exploring the Grimhack Station and Star Citizen Alpha 2.6. Number three, custom laser engravings. Hoonikin got several UEE logos as well as his own org logo on his new gaming laptop. It's a pretty cool way to let pirates know where you stand when traveling. Number two, Shooting Stars music video by Dastro. This uh, weird video of a naked man spinning in the verse is meme-tastic. I'm not sure why I watched it as long as I did, but at least the song is catchy. Number one, an MVP goes to Black Hawk for their engraved anvil crucible on quarter-inch plywood using their own custom-built CNC machine. It's a really unique piece of work showing off some of the love for the anvil crucible. Congratulations, Blackhawk. You're this week's MVP. Well, that's all for this week. We hope you enjoyed the show. Special shout out to Matt Fossa and John Crew for taking on the hot seat in this week's Quantum Questions. And with that, Woo! we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.